Iowa game is this weekend. Oh, yeah, okay. that's up for uh, people have pigs as pets. That's yes. true, in yeah. fact. And there's even some snorting here in this song. If you listen closely, <laughs> listen. I'm not hearing it. <laughs> listen. Hold on. <laughs> How long do we have to wait? I'm going to start from the beginning. How many times we can go through it? <laughs> you hear that? Yeah, I, I, I can hear that. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit. <laughs> Hot bellied pigs. I don't know if that'd be a good pet or not. I yeah, that's, that's up know. to the individual. In my house, it wouldn't be good. But uh, just last week, somebody came into the store and had gotten one. I don't know where you even get them. That's got to be a head turner, too, when the pig comes into the store, because you don't see those all, uh, yeah. all the time. They're right. cute little guys. Right, they're cute little guys when they're babies, and mm -hmm. then when they get old, you know, they don't get huge or anything like that, but they get big enough. And I, I think they're an intelligent animal in that y you can relate with them and stuff. I think it's just the stinkiness side of things. <laughs> and they might get a little... It's a pig. Right. It's right. a pig. you yeah. got to expect that. If you're going to get a pig, it's going to stink. And it's going to eat a lot too, right? Eat like a pig. Well, I think that's just a saying. I think they probably eat... Because, I, they're, I, me because they're messy. That's right, probably why. Right. I think there's a Out messy a component and, and all that. I don't know how the trainability of those guys are. Me neither. Never, never looked but like you them. don't carry them anyway, so we don't have to talk no. about piggies. No. We're going to talk about our, our breed of the week here, which uh, this week is the Lhasa Apso. Yes. And it's... Wow. That's a, it looks like a dog that could have some uh, hair issues if you don't let, get it groomed. Right. It's, we're looking on the radio here. We're looking at a, an adult Lhasa Apsu. If you go to Facebook uh, and log, or log into it, uh, search Petland Iowa City and ours will come up and you'll see uh, what a little puppy Lhasa Apsu looks like. And the haircut that you see there, which is actually hasn't even been cut yet, uh, that's what's called a puppy cut. And... That's what most Lhasa Apsu owners will cut their dogs like. Um, what what we're looking at is an AKC uh, haircut, and they're always those long and flowing hair. I mean, this is reminiscent of Farrah Fawcett or something like this on here, <laughs> you know, with all that blonde Farrah, hair. Farrah Fawcett dog style. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the dog version. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know. Yeah, it doesn't look like Farrah Fawcett. She was a very beautiful lady, um, but the uh, but the, the flowing hair, the flowing of the hair is is rather long, and <laughs> and obviously, if you were to keep it long, it's just going to be much more maintenance. If you keep it shorter, uh, it is easier. But I love the the history of the Lost Ops. So I guess we should uh, we'll we'll get into that. Uh, we, I also want to talk today about barking. Um, that's going to be our product, so to speak, of the day. Um, Yesterday, I was trying to leave the store, and I'm not joking. Everybody jokes that it takes me an hour to walk out of the store, but as I'm walking through, and you know, I got my little lunch pail and all that kind of stuff, and it's a it's a tradition for me to walk through the store and get asked many, many, many questions before I can walk out. And an hour later, I finally walked out the door, but four customers in a row. I, as I was working with one customer, I had two other customers stop and listen uh, to how do I stop my dog from barking? Mm. And every situation, all four of those were all different because the dogs had different characteristics of when they barked, why they barked, and then also how old they were. So I just wanted to go through that. I thought that was just, it was a very fun, we love doing this, you know, as far as talking about how can we help you um, help your dog type thing. And we'll go through those different scenarios and uh, possibly one of those will will be something similar to what you might have at home, and you'll go, oh, I got to try that. And uh, worst case scenario, come in and let us talk with you about your scenario that you have at home. I like it. That's what this show is about. Uh, we uh, take calls, and if you have a uh, question to ask to uh, Ron about something like barking or something else that's just driving you nuts, let's face it, we love our furry friends, but they can drive you nuts too. Uh, some issues that are, sometimes are easily solved. Uh, there's amazing things that have come out, and we've talked a lot about certain products and different techniques and things you can do. So if you have an issue going on, just feel free. You don't have to have the breed of the week to call us this week. But if you do have a Lhasa Apsu, we would love to hear from you this morning because I'd like to hear about what kind of personality traits they have, uh, what it's like to care for a Lhasa Apsu. That is our breed of the week. 319-354-0800. 
And that is the phone number, 319-354-0800. That will get you through to our line here, and you'll get a free bag of treats and a free bag of food for your dog, even if it isn't, again, a Lhasa option. If you just have a question for Ron, uh, contribute to the program. We love hearing from you listeners, 319-354-0800. It's the Positively Petland Show here on KXIC every Thursday at 9 a.m. If you miss a show, you can check out the podcast. It's available at kxic.com. You can also check out our blog, which is up there, too, with uh, photos of the different dogs and different uh, things that we do and, and the amazing pet story of the week and all that other stuff is up there on the blog. So it's uh, it's good. And you're up and rolling here on, on uh, Google Hangouts. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You just have to. You've been okay. invited, but you just haven't shown up. I'm too busy yet. chatting away. Yeah. Let me turn my camera yeah. <laughs> so everyone can see my beautiful face, right? You're not even on there yet. I'm working on it, Ron. I got things to do. I've got a show to run here, so I'll let you talk for a little while. How about that? <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> let me go sign in and you tell us about your store. How about that? Uh, we're Petland of Iowa City. Hey, I, it, Things happen so quickly uh, over, not only just in our store, things are very rapidly changing in our store. Uh, in all, you know, It's all fun. But the mall has changed. Yeah, I had that in the news yesterday. I was okay. talking all about that. What's the, so, Iowa City Marketplace. Yes. And yesterday I was uh, with our employees talking with the, what, the new Health Care Act. I forget how you say it all. But um, I was like saying, well, wait, you got to go to the marketplace in order to figure out you know, what you need to do. That's for your right. Insurance. That's and I right. go, ooh, the mall is now known as the, the mar- marketplace. The health and, insurance marketplace. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, that's not going to get a little confusing there. Uh, so we are located, I'm going to still say, across from the Sycamore Mall, also known as the, the market. marketplace. Yeah, because it's going to take a long time for people, especially long-time people, to not call it the Sycamore Mall. I and mean, that's oh, what it's known as. That's like in Chicago, not calling... The Sears Tower. The Sears Tower, yeah. The Willis Tower. Has it... I, I haven't heard anybody call it the Willis Tower. Uh, it's the Sears Tower. And so so we're across from the Sycamore Mall, also known as the Marketplace. Um, our hours of operation, if you're looking to get out there, is from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And then on Sunday, we're open from noon until 6. Uh, if you are having problems finding out, hey, where the heck is that place? Just put into your GPS or into the Google on your computer. Put 1851 Lower Muscatine Road, Iowa City. And we'll pop up and just follow the direction. Look for the going. construction cones. <laughs> yeah, that's finally start. I could see that uh, the construction all around us. We've been surrounded by construction for, I, I think it's coming on two years now. Oh. Uh, but it's coming to an end here, I think, by the end of this uh, fall. I suppose we are, too. You can see it you know, right yeah, here all it's even summer here long. The radio station. It's been a headache. But um, Our phone number is 319-351-9451 at the store. So if you have a question uh, and you need some help, just give us a call, 319-351-9451. And then you can check us out on the web at PetlandIowaCity.com. Um, we list all of the puppies that we have in the store. Um, I noticed this morning uh, we're about to uh, post a bunch more pictures, uh, all of the ones that I was out with the breeders, was it two days ago, um, picking up. And so those will get posted here probably uh, somewhere throughout the day today. Um, And then you can uh, see us on Facebook, like I said. Just go uh, onto your Facebook page, search Petland Iowa City, and we will pop up there. Do I need to talk some more, Jake? No, I think you need to re-invite me, though, because it's not oh. coming through. But for our listeners, because the Google Hangouts thing is just too confusing for me to explain, just go to YouTube and type in Petland Radio. And then once you go, if, you, if you're online, if you're on your computer and you want to watch our show right now, you just go to YouTube and type in Petland Radio. Uh, and then it it uh, pops up. It's usually the first uh, thing that pops up. You can see it was just posted like five minutes ago or whatever. And I will put a link on our Facebook page too. But before we move along and get to our first break, and then we'll open up the phone lines, take phone calls, and uh, talk about the breed of the week, the lot lots of Apsu. Uh, is that right? Lhasa Apsu? Lhasa Apsu. Lhasa Apsu. We're going to get the amazing pet story of the week. So big voice guy. Come, Come on. on in. Let's go. <laughs> It's time for the amazing oh, pet story of the of my head when he came. That was that was pretty mean. That was. He elbowed Ron as he walked by. Him. Not nice. Uh, this one takes us to Turkey, southwestern Turkey, the Kabek Koyu Beach. What happened here? Well, I saw it actually just this week, so I grabbed it and saved it for the 
amazing pet store. I thought this would be a good one. And uh, I will put the link up here on, uh, here we go. Thanks. Join the video call. Thank you, Ron. Uh, so we're going overseas for this one. And this is pretty cool. This is what, here's what happened with the, uh, it's always amazing. This article starts off with just how in, intuitive and helpful dogs can be. And that's what the amazing pet story always happens to be. They serve guides for the blind. They search and rescue uh, with officers. They are bomb detectors, but they're also fiercely loyal to their owners, no matter how young or old. A cocker spaniel what? here in Turkey was on the beach while a little child was crawling around. Well, apparently the, the, the child, and there is video of this, and I don't know why, how is there video of it if the guy, why wouldn't the person videotape it just run and save the child themselves? Uh, but the spaniel uh, takes off and saves the child because the child starts crawling into the ocean, head first, uh, just starts crawling into the ocean and was just about to get in the water. This cocker spaniel runs over and picks scoops him, him up and nice. drags him back and takes him away from the ocean. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Have we reviewed the cocker spaniel yet? No. Um, Oh, no. we'll, we'll, that will be in the next coming We will do that one soon. But I also want to know an answer to my question there of who was videotaping this as a know. child. Well, some, well, maybe this was caught on tape. Like, right. Maybe from, you, uh, you notice in the video the person kind of freaks out and starts running, but before the person gets there, I'm hoping that that's the case. Yeah. Instead, instead of, of just, just watching and letting the dogs see Right. The There's been a couple of videos recently, and I, you know, the kids are, well, you got to see this one. And I watch it and I go, does something kind of strike you as odd that so we're actually fake. seeing a video of this? Why isn't somebody, you know, jumping in? Right. And sure enough, a week later, uh, oh, one of them was a TV show, posted it, and it went viral. They didn't even tell that it was them. It was a, a more uh, evening talk show. Right. And right. then they finally came out and said, yeah, that was us. It was a spoof. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, pretty good, saving a dog, saving a child from the from the water. There's a lot of these stories that we find, and uh, if you ever see one, send it along to news at kxic.com too. You could feel free to do that. News at kxic.com. We'll take our break right now and be back. A great ad from uh, one of our friends at Jewelry by Herald coming up. It's my favorite ad that's on KXIC right now. Our favorite spot, uh, radio spot. It's coming up next on KXIC. Uh, Jack, my little boy, laughs like a hyena every time he hears this this commercial. It's coming up next wow. on KXIC. Wow, so we're waiting for a commercial it's right good. now. I love this. It's good stuff. It's good <laughs> stuff. Uh, we'll be back with Lhasa Apsu is our breed of the week. If you have one or know of someone that has one, get the word out. Tell your friend who has a Lhasa Apsu. Say, hey, they're talking about your dog on the radio. Call up. You'll get a free bag of treats, a free bag of dog food. 319-354-0800, 319-354-0800. All we need is the name of your dog and basically a little bit about him. Is it a playful dog, sleepy? What kind of personality does your Lhasa Apsu have? It's our Breed of the Week on the Positively Petland Show. For Ron Stalzer, I'm Jay Caper. We'll be right back with more after this. 319-354-0800, 319-354-0800. Honey, I'd like to ask you something. Why are you sitting on one knee? I have this diamond ring. Would you please marry me? <gasps> Is this what you've got me? Ow! Did she think the diamond was too small? They have a solution for that at Jewelry by Harold, Beaver Creek Center, North Liberty, for diamonds, engagement rings, and jewelry solutions. Don't miss the Northside Oktoberfest September 28th. We'll have 500 beers from around the block to around the world. All proceeds go to the American Heart Association and the Iowa Children's Museum. Tickets available at John's Grocery or johnsgrocery.com. Hi, I'm Poroville Mayor Jim Fawcett. Have you signed up for Poroville's free updates sent directly to you? You can choose to receive emails or text messages. It's free, fast, and a great way to stay in the know. At coralville.org, click Notify Me, then enter your email address or mobile phone number. Sign up for the Beat e-newsletter, Coralville News, every other Thursday. You can also get council info, weather cancellations, street closures, and more. Sign up now at coralville.org. Time Saver Total Traffic. Checking your traffic, we have a lot of construction taking place on Highway 151 near Walford. A lot of maintenance vehicles out and about. Same is true on Highway 149 near Williamsburg, near Interstate 80. 
If you know of a traffic problem, call us on the Royer Family Bell Tone here in Aid Center's tip line 319 39 Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show on AM 800 KXIC. 64 degrees with sunshine on a Thursday. I'm Jay Capron. Ron Saul's Roots here with Petland of Iowa City. Big, big chunk of programming for you here. We're going all the way up till about uh, 10 till or so. So we have a lot of time to take your calls. If you would like to call Ron with a question about your pets, if there's something driving you nuts, feel free. Or if you have the breed of the week, which we're just about to learn more about, the Lhasa Apsu is the breed of the week. It's a dog, and I, I'm going to put a picture up on Facebook for everybody so you can get an, a look because you might like look at, oh yeah, I've seen that dog before, but uh, the name itself is obviously a kind of a unique name, the Lhasa Apsu. And so if you are unfamiliar, you can check out our Facebook page. You'll see what it looks like. And again, we would love to hear from a Lhasa Apsu owner. So if you have one out there, call us up and get cash in, get some free treats for your Lhasa Apsu and get a free bag of food courtesy of Nutro just by calling the show 319-354-0800, 319-354-0800. If you don't have a Lhasa Apsu, but you know of someone who does, text them or call them or tell them, hey, you got uh, 20 minutes to call that uh, KXIC radio show because we'd love uh, to give away some free stuff. We love doing that here. Let's go to the phone line see if we have a Lhasa Apsu owner. Good morning. You're on KXIC. Uh, do you have a Lhasa Apsu? I have a mix of La- Lhasa Apsu yeah. and Bichon Freeze. Hey, that yeah. counts. There's a lot of Lhasa mixes out and there. And what's your name? It's Kathy Bensinger. Okay, Kathy. Well, you just want a free bag of treats and a free uh, bag of food from Nutro. So we'll get you set up with that. It'll be at Petland of Iowa City in your name, okay? Okay, sounds but, good. But first, we want to just hear a little bit about it. What's the dog's name? Chewy. It's actually Chewbacca because when he was born, he looked like Chewbacca. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, I can definitely see how that would happen. <laughs> now, and what kind of personality does he have? Oh, he's fun-loving. He likes to play, but he doesn't like to give up his toys. You oh, okay. have to fight him for it. So he he doesn't want to give those up, huh? No, and he likes to hide his bones instead of eat them, or he <laughs> thinks he's hiding them. Yeah, right. yeah, I love that when they do that. And does, yeah. does he have any uh, other pets around, or is he on his own? No, he's on his own. Okay, he's and does he is he active? I mean, will he run around a lot, or does he is he lazy? No, he uh, he likes to be active. He likes to go outside. He likes to go for a walk, and he gets in his moods of where he's really active, and other ones where he's lazy. We're lazy, so he's lazy. Sure. All right. Well, that's like great. That. And, and Chewy is what he goes by, huh? Right. All right. Well, yeah, Chewy has some things to chew on here, some free treats and a bag of food. So thanks. What was your name again? Kathy. Kathy. Yes, okay. Well, Kathy. thank you so much, Kathy. And uh, have a great day. Enjoy the weather, okay? Okay. You too. Thank uh, you. All right. There you go. You Kathy too. just showed you how easy it is. 319-354-0800. If you want to cash in on a free bag of treats, a free bag of food, Lhasa Apsu is the breed of the week. If you have one of those, we just need the name and uh, the bag, uh, you'll get a free bag of food. And, and again, we like to know a little bit about it just because it is our, our breed of the week. And so it's uh, it ties in very nicely. And I like I like how we've done this because I've learned a lot, honestly, Ron. I, you know, I've known some of the basics on some of these dogs. And, you know, I, I think back to the, the uh, what you call it, the, uh, the dachshund. Uh, and I thought that mm-hmm. was cool how they were, they, they, were, they were hunting in packs. And you, you see a little wiener dog, and the last thing you think about it being is a, is a hunter. But they would burrow into the, in, in the, the holes, and they would go together in groups and chase down. They were hunting some pretty vicious things, too. I think they said badgers or something like that at one right. point. I was like, wow, you know, that's, that's nuts. Yeah, but, there's all sorts of fun stuff that you learn on the terriers, the rat terriers. They were the ones that the hunters actually put them in little bags on their horses. Can you imagine a dog's head sticking out of a little bag on a horse? <laughs> They're like going, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> and then, and it was to get over the terrain. And then when they got to the area that they wanted to hunt, then they were, you know, released the terrier, the rat terrier at that point. And, and I just like, Man, the visual on that was really cool. That is neat. That is neat. And so we're going to learn right now a little bit more. And again, just know the phone lines are open. Kathy just showed you how easy it is. 319-354-0800. 319-354-0800. If you have a Lhasa Apsu, if it's a mix, that's fine. It works. What did she say it was mixed with? Did you catch a that? A bichon. Is that a pretty common mix there, those two? Yeah. Or? Yeah. And, and I'm, I th- if my memory says right, it was a Bichon. And yeah. so you've got... Yeah, yeah, a nice non-shedding dog at that point. At that, uh, and 
and we'll talk about some of the characteristics that, that you've said are, are key with Elasa. Elasa is a interesting uh, breed and it has an interesting past. And so we'll bring that in. Um, what I was uh, glad to hear is she said that there was uh, a laziness. Uh, you know, we're a lazy kind of family and so our dog is lazy. That's the training thing that they did, whether it was direct or indirect. And that is something that we'll read about in Alasa and something I stress with families when they when you learn about a Alasa Apsu, you're gonna find, hey, there is some spunkiness to it. But like everything, if you bring training into that equation. You can you can change it, right. Yeah. And that's one of the things I was upset I didn't have ready was I have a uh a Chewbacca sound effect, and she, she said, <laughs> "Chewy, I wish I would have played it at the same time." Do you have some? I, I do have it, but but do you have some Tibetan music or anything? I don't have that either, so that. I'm just failing on all levels here this morning. But uh, that Chewy sound effect, see, I would have to. I'd have to get out of Google Hangouts. I got to figure out a way around this. I've got to get more sound effects on my on this computer, Ron, because it doesn't work when I pull this. It doesn't up. work. When see, I pull this. that's what happens. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna. I don't think this is gonna. I don't think this is, no. All right. Anyway, so let's learn more about the the Lhasa Apsu. All right. Well, if do you have any like mystery music or any? Oh no, you can't do anything. You just well, said, I right? can. I can. I'll tell you what. Do you have any like? I'll, here's what I'm gonna do. do I've got to get out of some Google kind of. I've got to get out on, of this. Or some. I don't even could be tropical type. Tropical. Music. We gotta. We have some. I got a story that I'm gonna read here, and you gotta have something. So going. I'll get that ready. Here's what we need to do. We need to reverse. I will course here for just a second. Well, I need, I'm gonna just talk about. So the Lhasa. Okay, go is, ahead. And I'll get the music ready, and then I'll go into the history of it, and you'll play that music. So okay. we're we're designing this along the way. <laughs> um, so the Lhasa Apsu is a smaller breed. They're gonna be in that. Oh, I think it's around a 12 inch height as far as your shoulders go. Um, it, it down below 20 pounds as far as the weight goes. So this is a smaller dog. So the the nice thing about that is is a lot of the exercise that it needs requires will happen just by chance or by nature in your house or in your apartment. It's a smaller breed, so they'll get that uh, with smaller breeds. That's the advantage to them. Um, if you're you know you, you don't get outside all that much, then the Lhasa is something that you want to consider as opposed to a large breed. A large breed in an apartment is more of a struggle. They're going to be confined. They're going to get really uh, active in there and they're going to want to, you know, act it out. They want to run. And in a small apartment, apartment. do that. Ouch. Um, <laughs> but then in a, uh, with a Lhasa, they're going to tear around the place and have their fun and get that energy out, especially in the morning when they wake up. They've got a lot of energy. They're going to eat and they're going to go, oh, yeah, life is good. Run around the place and then, you know, fall over because they're they're tired and it's, it's time for the early to mid-morning nap that a dog uh, loves to take. So uh, some other things, their temperament is unique, joyful, mischievous. <laughs> dignified and aloof. And I love all of the adjectives that we just said there. Um, joyful. So it's a really fun dog. It's happy to see you. Mischievous. It needs to be active. It wants to be engaged. That's the Lhasa. And that's why when we were uh, talking uh, with Kathy, she had talked about, and it was probably after that first year of age, probably started to slow down a little bit. And since that family slowed down as well or, or has a lower activity rate, the dog uh, naturally matched that as well. So that's nice to hear that a loss of mix um, is capable of doing that. Dignified, they tend to be um, a, a more of a dog that is about themselves. Um, they, they'll they cuddle when they want to cuddle. They'll uh, engage when they want to engage. And so that dignified comes there, and that's also where the aloof uh, comes from where uh, that's a little bit of their trait. But again, if you are engaging that dog in a loving way, cuddling, hugging, and all that kind of stuff, they're going to grow to like that. Um, and and that, that's going to be part of your repertoire and part of your breed there. So um, if you wanted that dog that just naturally tends to go that way, that looks something like what a Lhasa Apsu looks like, well, then more of a Shih Tzu uh, breed is what you're looking for there. But the Lhasa is going to have a little more character to it, a little more pizzazz to it as far as... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and that's the call of the Lhasa Apsu. <laughs> that's Chewy. <laughs> Chewbacca. Um, so the... Uh, 
<laughs> you got me off my pace now. I know. I did it on purpose. Uh, some of the colors that they have, they go from light blonde. That's where I got that Farrah Fawcett reference from, all the way to black. So there's uh, different colors that you're going to see through there. Do you have any music? Yeah, I, I should uh, actually have something here. I'm just going to uh, – we have this cool system here with uh, Clear Channel that we have over 10,000 music. We have the rights to over like 10,000 themes. And so what you do is you go in to this big database. You type in like what you want. I'm going to put Tibetan. I don't know if anything's going to come up for Tibetan, but if it does, we're going to use it. Uh, yeah, All right, yeah here, cool. here it comes. Yeah, you'll get some. Mid-tempo, Tibetan-influenced, lyrical, poetic, mystical. Yeah. Does that sound like it's going to work it for us here? Yeah. All right, here we go. You can turn it down a little bit, so I can. So, so, so here's the history of the Lhasa officer. Uh, beyond the northern boundary of India, where the mighty Mount Everest stands like a guardian sentinel, is the mysterious land of Tibet, a country where conditions are hard on man and beast because of the intense cold and great heat. This is the home of the Lhasa Apsu, known in the land as Apso Singhe. The bark bark lion sentinel dog. Small wonder when that when that these members of dogdom should be such hardy and vigorous constitution. So they're just saying <laughs> there's all sorts of fun stuff here. So since danger threatened from without and within in this strange land, a huge mastiff was chained to a post beside the outer door to prevent intruders <laughs> from entering. What Lhasa Apsus were kept as special guards inside the dwelling. For this work, the little dogs were <laughs> peculiarly adapted by their intelligence, quick hearing, and finely developed instinct for distinguishing intimates from strangers. And so that, that's the, a nice story that I thought. That is you know, good. About it. Oh, you think you could do... Get out of here. Get out. Oh, the big he, man? He thinks that he, he could do it better because he's got a big voice. <laughs> you know? Yeah, out. Might have been we, interesting. Here's one called the Lhasa Chant. It's actually called the Lhasa Chant. There we go. So I don't know if it's going to be better, but I'll, I'll put this on too for you and uh, see if it if it works for you. So the Lhasa Apsu from the lamasaries and villages around the sacred city of Lhasa. So it came from a city called Lhasa. Is one of the three breeds that came from that area, and they're all uh, either labeled as terriers or non-sporting group uh, breeds. Um, there's another interesting fact because there is one uh, individual. Yeah, here uh, I'm gonna really not do good on the name. Sudam Cutting, a naturalist and world traveler, is singularly responsible for the establishment and reputation of the Lhasa in America. Mm. I, you don't hear that too many times. No, you it's don't. usually you know, it's a group of people that love the breed and all that. But one individual is, is the, the founder of this breed. It was recognized by the AKC, uh, the non-sporting group. Lhasa Apsu owners had they formed a group and they went to the AKC and they were recognized in 1935. Um, what are some other sizes? 1935, talk, huh? Yeah, so it's been around. Yeah, it's been around a while. Um, their size ranges in the U.S. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and then the size ranges from 10 to 11 inches tall at the shoulder and 12 to 18 pounds. Known as a companion slash watchdog. So this would be one of those dogs that would do would be a good watchdog, but would not be good at defending. They're too small. I can just tell you that there's someone there. Yeah. But hey, look at that. There's something going on over there. Somebody, go get him. Somebody else. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> All right. That was the so Lhasa chance. A Lhasa. I like it. There's a Tibetan tug of war they have here. We can have that That's a little going bit more for the rest upbeat, of the show right? if you want in a very low, and we'll talk about barking. And this is a nice soothing tone to talk about barking. All right. I like it. You getting into it? I Get am. the bongos out. The bongos. Wait, that probably wouldn't be <laughs> relevant with it. No, it would not work. <laughs> oh, Chewbacca didn't like that <laughs> that reference. 319-354-0800. 319-354-0800. The Lhasa Apsu is the breed of the week. If you have one or if you know of someone that has one, spread the word. We have about 10 minutes left of the program. And if you call us up during the show and just give us the name of your dog and a little bit about your dog, you get a free bag of treats courtesy of Neutro and a free bag of food 
courtesy of Nutro, just by calling the program, 319-354-0800, 319-354-0800. That's how you get a hold of us here, the Lhasa Apsu, the breed of the week. And so if your Lhasa is barking too much or any of your breed, uh, any of your dogs, whatever breed they are, if they're barking too much, it's something that Ron says in this last week, Four different people uh, all at once were in the store, and they all started. You were talking to one customer, another one was listening. They were having the same problem. So there's obviously people out there that are having trouble with barking at their homes. Right, and we talked. The first customer I came in had bought an uh, dachshund just two weeks ago. Bought You're making bought? up words. Oh, I do. Hey, that's the engineering coming out. I totally apologize for that, but that good. is a characteristic of me. You also find if you talk with me, I don't have a computer for a brain. I have a card catalog system, and it's slow. No. <laughs> so, oh yeah, you talk with me, and I could have let that slide, but I just like busting your chops. That's purchased what? It, what what I should like I have do. said? Per, well, purchased would have worked, but yeah, bought. Purchased or bought? Bought. Bought is fine. I like bought, though. It sounds good. I don't know. <laughs> so, anyways, they purchased this uh, little puppy two weeks ago, and over that two weeks has developed a bark. And what was interesting is it's it's really important to uncover, you know, the characteristics of when can you tolerate it and when can you not before mm. training purposes is what I needed to know. So the husband was uh, talking about it and said, you know, I can deal with it for the most part. Uh, I would do work out of my house. Uh, there is some issues then that I, I gets a little distracting. I go, okay, we'll address those. Uh, but but the rest of it you don't care about. And she he goes, no, I I can uh, deal with that. And so then I talk with the wife, and she said, in the morning when I'm getting ready, I can't stand it. I, it's it's I'm I'm at my wits end. I'm trying to get ready. I'm trying to get ready for work. I'm trying to wake up. Mm. And uh, Berkeley is just barking, 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 barking. And so. Um, I said, I go, okay, so there's a second situation. I go, in general, when we're talking about barking, if you can ignore the bark, uh, then that's one of the best training tools because what is a dog doing when they're barking? They're trying to get attention, uh, especially when it's inside the house and they want your attention. They're going to bark. So what you want to do is ignore the bark and as soon as they quiet down. You, sometimes, you know, they're so intense with that barking. Even if they uh, stop for 10 seconds, that's when you can jump in, let them out, do whatever you need to do, um, and uh, give them the attention when they stopped barking. Now, tomorrow and the next day and the next day, try to lengthen that 10 seconds out longer so that you can uh, prevent that barking and they'll get more and more of that message as you go along. Another thing to note about Berkeley was um, he said that it's getting better. It's, it's decreasing. Um, she said in the morning, it's not. It, I'm still, you know, I don't see any, any uh, improvement over the last two weeks. So to the husband, I said, continue on the path that you're at as far as ignoring. Uh, only pick up when not barking uh, or, or going into and giving it attention when it's not barking. Good stuff. Uh, if there is a time when you're working and let's say you're on the phone and the barking is, is getting louder, that's when you have to take that kennel, uh, bring them down into a basement or something like that, something away from you, close the door and all that kind of thing so you uh, don't get distracted. The dog can bark its energy out and all that kind of stuff. And then as soon as you're done um, and the dog quiets down, now you can go back in. Uh, Jesse from our store jumped in and said, you know, another thing is, is just getting the dog used to pacifying itself. This is very similar to a child, a uh, little baby. Uh, they need to learn to take care of themselves. Obviously, when a baby is younger, um, it takes you have to take care of it, especially right at that beginning. But a 15-year-old can take care of it himself or herself pretty much entirely. So something happens between an infant and when they get older. They learn to take care of themselves. And so as parents, we're teaching them how to take care of themselves. Same thing applies to the dog. Um, and so what you want to do and what Jesse's idea was is um, you can bring the kennel into, this is not during the morning, not when you're trying to get everything done, but just normal activity. Uh, so uh, put the kennel in the family room. You might be watching TV or whatever and work with the dog in the kennel 
to ch help it pacify itself. So find the toys that will uh, that it gets very interested in. Um, in this case, Berkeley was very interested in uh, bully sticks and flossies and and things like that. Natural chews that have a meat component to them, and so they were working with. Uh, Berkeley and saying, okay, here's a good shoe. They also noticed they had a stuffed toy that was meant to be a warmer for the dog, um, but uh, Berkeley chewed it all up. And I go, well, a bummer that he chewed up his warmer, but he's also telling you that he likes plush toys. He likes ropes. He likes that kind of a thing. So find things that your dog will enjoy and learn to, okay, so then put them in the kennel and give them these things to work on. Um, you might have uh, short training sessions in that case, and you might find, well, after five minutes, he just wants to be out. Well, work with him. You know, after five minutes, let him out then. Um, when you can work with him like this, in the morning when things are, you know, you're too hectic, okay, you can't do it at that point. That's not a good training time. That's just the uh, tough love time, and that is, is you got to uh, work through the bark and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, so conditioning is another way of handling it. So we talked about ignoring the bark. Um, and then when you are able to do some training, condition them so that the kennel is a very cool place to hang out. And by the way, here's some toys. Here's some things that you can work with and all that kind of a thing. Right. So and that was basically, that was for a new puppy and we're trying to condition. The puppy's still learning habits and all that kind of stuff. It's not really entrenched in any one habit at that point. Well, one of the things I know we've talked about in the past is the trying to deal with things before it gets to the breaking point. And, and barking can be one of them. I know that uh, how how frustrating this can be because we had a neighbor that the, the worst part was they would leave for the day and let their dog out and, and the dog would be in the yard barking and they're gone. And so the dog, right, it's right. he's annoying everyone else in the neighborhood. And I, and for again, like you said, some people just ignore it and they, they don't care. It's just a dog barking. But for me, for whatever reason, after a while, like I would be trying to read something or I'm just concentrating and just and go, go, and, go oh, and go yeah, and go yeah. and go. And so the... Let's address if, that one. But now. if it's your own dog, you know, before you get to the point where you're ready, like you're just so upset at it, you just, uh, you know, it's driving you nuts. It's good to, to try some of these different methods that you were talking about. But what can you do when it's your neighbor's dog? I mean, besides you work calling with the police, neighbor. I know they get calls all the time. Well, from, first off, off, you want to obviously work with your neighbor. And we've all had right. those situations where it's kind of difficult to talk about something with the neighbor. Yeah. Um, and you see so you handle that delicately and appropriate for the neighbor that you have. And you work through it as best you can. And um, it, it's just like offer an advice, you know, for a married couple and you're Joe off the street, they're going to be a little defensive on the whole thing. Right. So probably right. not offering advice, just identifying, Hey, if there's anything you can do about the barking, I'd appreciate it. And usually I, I know the different neighbors that have dogs with uh, around us. Oh, I, yeah, it got out that one day and it was barking. We so much, you know, we're apologizing for that. They usually take care of it. And so just, Keep on working with them is the biggest thing. I think calling the police is really the last thing you were right. going to do. But you can tell just by what the police bought her. I mean, they get calls a lot, oh, yeah. especially late at night when people right. are trying to sleep. And, so you know. well, let's handle, you know, you can't uh, always handle those your neighbor, but you can handle your own dog. And so uh, there were four different customers into the extreme. Another customer came in and, and had the dog with. It was a Lhasa mix. I mean, I'm sorry, a uh, Papillon mix. And... Uh, was clearly a barker, um, w was barking when we were talking, was barking when she picked him up. Um, and so she had a, a, a more incessant barker. I can't remember the age, but there was multiple years on, on this dog. It was either a year old or multiple years thereon. So this dog has developed some habits and was demonstrating that they're pretty entrenched. And I said, I go, okay, there's a couple of different things here. You can use the ultrasonic ba uh, bark, a uh, little uh, hut that you can put in your house. It works within the room that that dog is in. It works pretty effectively. 70% of the time, I think it, it's effective. I know it worked extremely well on both of our dogs. All we had to do is turn it on and they would quiet down immediately. Um, it took a little bit for them to figure out the pattern. If I bark, then that noise occurs and all that kind of stuff. So that's one. Um, but let's bring in the dreaded bark collar, the shock collar, and talk about what good uses that has because that product does a really good job of stopping the bark. But everybody goes, but I don't want to shock the dog. 
so let's talk about that technology and what it's what it's doing um, and what you can do to make sure that it's the right product for you. Because if you say, I'm not going to do it, that's fine. But realize what its intended purpose is. If you come, if you just watch puppies playing, and if you want to see puppies play, come into our store and you'll see it. Um, you'll notice from time to time that one puppy really gets in the face of another dog and it's either biting its tail or its legs or or it's barking in its face or or something and it's trying to get the the other dog's attention and you can see that it's like come on let's go let's go or it's just antagonizing it like a little child antagonizing the other dog um, if you watch it long enough the dog that's receiving all this will eventually uh, turn around and bite that dog not puncturing skin you won't see blood or anything but you might hear a yipe from that, that dog that was doing all the uh, uh, antagonizing. And what happened was, is that's how dogs learn. And it, that bite occurred. Did it hurt? Yes, because you heard the yipe. Mm -hmm. And so that's how dogs uh, communicate to one another. We, as people, we can communicate at a little higher intelligence with them. And that's why most of the training that we do has nothing to do with a, a pain component to it. But what the, with that really tenacious dog that is not stopping barking and it's, uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's irritating the neighbors, um, with this one uh, customer that I was talking with yesterday, I related with her because the, as the dog was barking, we had a barking dog and still have the dog, but we don't have near as much barking. I, there was times when I, I really got not myself when that dog was barking and I'm and I, I related with her. I said, I go, I totally see what's happening here. You're very irritated with your dog. Um, you love your dog, mm -hmm. but that barking really brings out a different personality. And so we want to do something to help the dog not antagonize you so much. And and uh, once we stop the barking, let's give the attention to the dog that it's desiring as well. And so that's through you know. Uh, petting and, and, and playing and all that kind of stuff. I go, let's talk about the, the bark collar and that when it does that little shock, it's like the dog bite, biting the other dog. Um, if you wanted to try it out on yourself, it don't worry about it. It, it, it is, it's startling a little bit, but it's not going to like hurt you or harm you or anything like that. And yeah. that's what we do with our own employees is, I go, and before you can send one of these bark collars home, you got to feel what it feels like. And so we put it on their hand or on their forearm. Um, if they're really tenacious, uh, the, 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 the counselor is really uh, out to look and see what it feels like, put it on your neck. <laughs> the biggest thing that I found when I put it on my neck and activated it was that it contracted my muscle. Uh, that was the most alarming thing. I was like, oh, I didn't an anticipate that my muscle was going to contract. Right, because it's sending uh, so shockwaves there. Realize, well, it's an electrical impulse that it throws right. through just like your body uses to control muscles. And so it, it operates at the same frequency and so that it does that. So realize it is a tool that is useful to a lot of people. Right. And, you know, we've talked about this topic in particular and we could do it. We did a whole show, I remember, on different collars in different ways because so, and, and, and one thing that you should be clear about because this is a sensitive topic. I know for some people, oh, those are nasty. I never would use them. You're not forced to use them. There's no one there no. at Petland's going to say this is what you need. No, you know, so there are. It's actually collars, usually one collars. of the last things because there's other uh, things you can use if you don't want to, to have that shock of your dog. But, right. uh, you know, it's good to get uh, that information too as we get ready to wrap up the show uh you got about a minute here a little less than that so we got less than a yeah, minute tell yeah. us about your uh, shop we're petland iowa city across from the sycamore mall also known as marketplace uh our uh our phone number 319-351-9451 easiest way to find out about who we are is go to petlandiowacity.com we have all sorts of things from pictures of puppies to how we do things in our store to warranties and all of what you get with our puppies. You'll even see our mission statement and stuff like that. And I, if you have any questions about Petland, that's a great website just to look at and learn more about us. All right. Until next week, it's been the Positive Petland Show. Chewbacca, take us out. <laughs> what is this guy? Come on, Chewy. Oh, Chewy's Chewy. Gone. Get the big man in here. <laughs> the big... See, here's today's community calendar for Thursday, September...